welcome to a new edition of Cracking Cryptic, where today I'm going to take a look at a most extraordinary puzzle uh, that has appeared on the Nickley.com website um, recently. Now, those of you familiar with Nickley will know that Nickley uh, publishes um, handcrafted Japanese pencil puzzles. Um, so when I say handcrafted, I mean these are not created by a computer, these are created by hand. They're all, always, therefore, very elegant puzzles. Um, and you know a privilege to solve frankly but they're normally doable um, you know even their extra hard puzzles they're, they're intended to be solvable within 10 or 15 minutes depending on the size of the puzzle now in terms of sudoku solving to get puzzles that take 10 15 minutes for the heart you know for the best solves in the world it is unheard of the very best solves in the world are done in four or five minutes, even on very, very difficult puzzles. But I want to show you how long this puzzle took Hideaki Joe. Now Hideaki Joe, uh, again, those of you who follow the channel may be aware, is undoubtedly, if we look over the last 10 years of solving in the world, in world terms, Hideaki Joe is definitely top 10, and probably top five, may even be top three. He is one of the great, great solvers of puzzles generally, and Sudoku puzzles in particular. Um, don't think he ever won the World Championship, but he came incredibly close on many, many occasions. Um, just a superbly clever bloke. And let's just take a look at how long um, this Sudoku puzzle took Hideaki Joe. So hopefully you can see there on the screen, Deyu, that's his uh, pseudonym on the site, it took him an hour and eight minutes to solve this puzzle. Um, now you may be thinking, how on earth can that be the case? Well that's why I thought this would be quite an interesting puzzle for us to have a look at um, now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go, I'm actually going to work through uh, Tom Collier's solve of this puzzle because um, Tom Collier, as those of you again who follow the channel knows that UK Sudoku champion. Uh, many times he's represented the UK in the World Sudoku Championship. Uh, seriously, seriously good solver. Um, his pseudonym on, on nickley.com is detuned. There he is. I found um, Radiohead, I presume. Um, and uh, it took him 33 minutes, but I'm not even sure this could be his second attempt at this. You can see he's opening puzzle twice. So it, it, you know, and a puzzle again for a puzzle to take Tom this long is absurd. Now, having said that, let's try and load up his uh, his solution and just see which is okay. So here it is on the screen now, and we're going to look how why this puzzle was so difficult. Now, in doing this, it's of course essential, I think, that you do spend a few minutes pausing the video, perhaps even note down the puzzle yourselves and have a go at it just to see what's tricky. You can see at the start there are, you know, you can place a three immediately in this cell. Let's see, let's see how Tom's solve goes. So immediately that's exactly what he does. He places a four here. Again, you can see that's that simple Sudoku uh, with the four up here and the four here and the four here. So that's good. He places the four here. Again, straightforward Sudoku. No time has gone in terms of this is Tom's total solve time here. We know that this end of it's 33 minutes long, so this has taken him a mere couple of seconds to do this. And then he places the six here, six, six, again, six here. And now Tom, which, and this is unusual, I've looked at the solving patterns of a lot of the very best solvers, and it appears to me that most of them who got this done in any amount of time, any reasonable amount of time, sort of 20 minutes or less, guessed from here. Now Tom doesn't guess. Tom's first sort of bit of difficult logic is he places these sevens in this uh, this pattern around the grid, which is a square pattern. And it, it behoves us, I think, to just try and understand why Tom is placing these sevens here. And what he's noticed is an X-wing. Um, you can see the pattern of this is an X shape if we were to draw the lines along the diagonals, and that's why it has the name X-Wing. 
And what's Tom trying to illustrate here? Well, if we look at column one and ask ourselves, where can you place a seven in column one? You can see you can only place it in this position and this position. If we do the same thing on column seven, again, exactly the same in, in row one and row seven. That's the only positions you can place a seven. Now, by noting this, we can say a couple of things. The first thing we can note is that whichever way these sevens turn out to be, let's say the seven was here, that would mean the other seven was here, and vice versa, if the seven was here, the other seven would be here. Whichever way these sevens turn out to be, there can't be any other sevens in rows one, um, row seven um, at all. Now that's interesting because if we now take a look at this column, column six, let's ask ourselves now, where can we place a seven in column six? You can see we can no longer place it here because of the X wing. Can't place it here anyway, I suppose, because of this seven here. We could place it here. We can't place it here because of this seven. Now, can we place it here? No, you can see we can't place a 7 here because of the X-Wing, because either this will be a 7 or this will be a 7. So there's now only one position in column 6 where a 7 can go, and it's this one. I suspect that's what Tom will notice immediately, and he does. Again, hardly any time has gone on the clock here, and he spotted this X-Wing and the fact it gives him a 7 here. Now let's see where he goes from this point. Okay, incredibly... He spots a second next week again in moments. Now he's looking at he's looking at column one and column six now, and he's looking at the number one. So again, if we ask ourselves where can a one go? It can't go here. Could go here. Could go here. Can't go here. And he's got the same configuration over this side. So again, this rules out other ones in row two this time and row six. Now this doesn't give him another number at this point. It's just something he's noted and he wants to notate for it. Let's go further. Incredibly, Tom now spots a third X-Wing, this time on fives. Again, in columns one and columns six again. And this is absolutely fascinating for two reasons. The first is that this X-Wing on fives allows him to deduce something about column seven of the grid. So let's ask ourselves, where can a five now appear in column seven? Clearly it can't be in either of these positions because of this five. It could be here. It can't be here anymore because of this X wing on fives. And it can't be here either because of the X wing on fives. So in fact, there's only one square left now in column seven where a five can go, I imagine. That's got, Tom immediately spots that <laughs> and, and writes it in. Now, I can tell you, I'm just let's remember this is where he's at. I'm going to show you how his solve developed here. He spots an X wing on sixes over here, and then he finds all sorts of other patterns in the grid, including swordfishes. I might add, look, he's found a swordfish there on nines. Um, so. I mean, I, this video isn't going to be about swordfishes, but those of you interested in swordfishes, we, we have covered it on the channel. Um, but look at that, he has spotted one there. And then he goes on from here, and it takes him a very long time to make further progress. But let's just go back to where he was, where he where he just placed this five. Because he had the chance here, and he does spot it later, to note something quite beautiful about column two. Um, Let's take a look at column two and really study it. And again, I'd really recommend pausing the video here. Um, we've got a three, a six, and a four in the column, and then six open positions up here. But we haven't yet placed a one, five, and a seven, clearly, in column two. But these X wings we've found have a very, very interesting effect on where we can place the numbers one, five, and seven in this column. For example, let's look at this square. You can see we already have a 1 and a 5 in row 1, but the 7 is given by the X-Wing, so that the 7 is ruled out from this square. Similarly, 
we have a 7 and a 5 already in row 2, but we have the 1 from the x-wing. So again, 1, 5 and 7 is ruled out from this square. Now let's look at this square. We've got a 7 in the row already, but look, we have a 1 and a 5 being ruled out by the x-wing. So in fact, this square cannot be 1, 5 and 7 either. So in fact, if we study column 2 at this particular moment and solve, it is, I suppose, possible to notice, and Tom was so close to noticing it, that these four, three squares here, this square, this square, and this square, are the only squares that can take the numbers 1, 5, and 7 in column 2. And then we could have looked at this, where we have a 5 and a 7, and it would be possible to place a 1 here at this stage of the solve. And that would, in fact, break the puzzle open because you can see if there was a one here we have a one here one here one here would allow us to place the one here we could then complete the x-wing by placing a one here and a five here and a five here and in fact the solve from there it doesn't become trivial but it becomes doable and this is why I wanted to cover this in the video this this is an extraordinarily involved pattern um, and quite beautiful and Tom Collier very nearly spotted it in about a minute <laughs> um, which is quite incredible to me and any puzzle that takes Hideaki Joe an hour is well worth studying um, so a relatively short video I'll, I'll, I'll cut it off there I hope it was clear I hope you got something out of this um, absolutely fantastic from Nicolae uh, and from Tom and we'll see you again next time I'm cracking a cryptic.